Good evening, church. And it's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. I'd like to welcome everybody out to the Murphy Church of God tonight. It's an honor to be in this place tonight. I'm thankful for the opportunity to be able to worship for you tonight. I appreciate you, Pastor, for inviting me to minister the Word of God unto you tonight. It's just an honor to be here. The Word says us in readiness into His courts with thanksgiving and praise in our heart. I don't know about you, but I want to enter in this court with thanksgiving and praise in my heart tonight because I know that God's still on the throne tonight. And I know He has something good in store for us tonight, church. And if we'll just open our hearts unto Him and, and just uh, be obedient tonight. Seek Him tonight. Love Him a little more tonight. But just love on the Lord tonight. I tell you, He's good to us, church. <laughs>
just to be able to, it's a humbling thing to God to call you into something like this anyway. It's a humbling experience. But I'll tell you what, God so always good at church. God is so good to us. We've got so much today to thank Him for. Praise God we saved our souls from the devil's hate. And that right there is something to rejoice over in the church. We've got a promise of a better place, a better home. This is just a temporary place for passing through church. It's just temporary. And we don't have long, praise God, to, to make an impression, to, to labor for the Lord. We don't have long to do it, church. We don't have long to work. I believe we're right here at the, at the end of time, church. I believe we're in the very last of the last days, church. And if there's ever been a time that I believe that the church needs to get a hold of God, it's today. If there's ever been a time that the church needs to get closer to the Lord, that time is today, church. Let's don't put off, don't put off today to what we can do tomorrow. Let's don't look at things like that. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Today is the day to be working for Him and to be trying to do something to lift up the body of Christ or be able to speak the name of Jesus and be a witness to those that are lost, church. Today is that day. You believe after that, church? I believe we're living in the last days, church. I know we're living in the last days. According to the Word of God, we are in the last days. You look around and see that, church. Look how many, look how many people are sitting in the, sitting in the congregation in that. We're, we're, we're in that great falling away, church. We're seeing that great falling away right now. We're, we're, we're in the last days, church. And we know that these, this great falling away must come to pass. That the son of perdition may be revealed. But church, I'm going to tell you what, I believe God still got something for His church to do. You believe that in that church? I believe God still wants to use His people in that church. Church, if you will, if you have your Bible, will you turn with me to 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, and verse 4. We want to stand for the reading of the word. You're able. Make sure I give everybody plenty of time to turn to the word. I don't want to rush nobody with that. I'm going to read, I'm going to read verse number four of the church, 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not called, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Once again, church, for the weapons of our warfare are not called, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. Be seated, church. Church, I've been Lord giving me this, give me this scripture about a week and a half or two weeks ago. I've not been able to get away from it. For some reason, the Lord just laid it on me, the tearing down, and the pulling down of stronghold. Church, I get to think about Israel, how God led Israel out of out of out of Egypt, out of bondage, and we all know, we read it, we know it. He led them out with a strong hand. We know about the we read about the plagues that he put upon Pharaoh and his people and all the miraculous wonders and signs that God did by the hand of Moses. He led he led his people out with a strong hand, church. With a strong hand. He parted the Red Sea for them. And they walked upon dry land. You know, our God is able to that church. There's nothing that our God isn't able to do. No matter what, even through all of what the what God had done for his people, they still didn't want to believe. They come up to the edge of the promised land. They come time for Israel to cross over into the promised land. And uh, in the church, they hesitate. I think they hesitate. And I tell you tonight, church, that we're standing on the brink of the promised land. Today, we, we church, are standing on the brink of the promised land today, just as Israel was when God led them out of bondage and it was time for them to cross over in the promised land. 
They were standing on the brink of recovery, church. It's the same way as the church today is standing on the brink of the promised land. I believe it's about time for the church to cross over to the promised land, church. I believe that day is soon approaching. Do you believe it, church? Now, church, I'm telling you, get behind me on this thing because I believe God's going to show us something here tonight. I believe God's going to show us that, church. If we'll just be obedient to it, be willing, praise God, to, to receive His word, I can't make nothing happen. But I'll tell you what, I'm the one who can, church. Let me tell you, God is still on the throne, church. He's still able to carry His church through, church. No matter what we face or what we come against, God is able, church. Oh, praise God, I'm beginning to feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I believe, church, we now all need to just let go and let God have His way tonight. Not only open our minds, but let's open our hearts up to the Word of God and not be ready to receive what God has in store for us, church. I'm telling you, God's going to do something in this place. I believe He's going to take the church to a higher place in Him, church. I believe He's going to take our faith a little bit higher, church. Yeah. Bear with me, I'm not as experienced as some of these other preachers that's been in this thing for years and years. But praise God, I know the one who knows all things in that church. I know the one, praise God, I know the one that's able, able to do all things and reveal all things tonight, church. We read how they, they come up to the heaven, stand on the brink of the promised land, church. And by the command of, by the, command of the Lord, the Lord commanded Moses to send twelve spies into the land of Canaan to spy out the land. To spy it out to see if, to see if the, the people be strong or whether they be weak. Whether they be few or whether they be many, whether they dwell in tents, whether they dwell in strongholds, whether the land be good or whether it be bad, whether they be wood in the land. I get just like the people. <laughs> Church is kind of like we are today. See? See, God was wanting to reveal himself. He was wanting to show himself to him. He was wanting them to believe in him. Church, we've got to believe what God says. God told him to go on through that thing. He said, I'll be the one that fights for you. Can I tell you tonight that God is the one that fights our battles tonight? It's not us, church, but the Spirit that dwelleth in us, church. It might take me a minute to get where I'm going, but I believe the Holy Ghost is going to bring me around that spot, church. Told her to take of the fruit of take of the fruit of the land. While they were in the land, they took, took of the fruit. Church, listen to this. They came to the brook of Esther. They cut it down from midst the ranks with one cluster of grapes. And they bare it between two upon a staff. And they brought it the pomegranates and the fish. Can you imagine that bunch of grapes, church? It was so large that they had to bear it between two upon a staff. I've never seen that bunch of grapes with you. I believe some of them might even ate one or two of them. Anyway, they, when the spies came back into the land, they said, Surely it is a land that floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. But listen, church. Nevertheless, nevertheless, the people be too strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, which is the, of the giants. There's that nevertheless word. A lot of times, church, we want to put that but word in there. But the land is good, but God is good, but God can do it, but will God do it for me? And I tell you now, God will do it for you. God will do it for his people. God will still fight our battles for us, church, just the same way that he fought the battles for Israel, church. He'll take us all over into the promised land. There's a better day coming, church. Let's look ahead. Let's look ahead. Let's look at the good thing. Look at the promises God's given us. But Israel said the spies go back and evil report. Caleb withstood the people before Moses and said, Let's go up at once and let's possess it, for we are well able to overthrow it. Caleb was one of the twelve spies. They took one of, the, one of each tribe of Israel, one ruler of each tribe. For the spies that you sent into the land, and Caleb and Joshua were two of the spies. And Caleb stealed the people. The people got afraid. They were afraid of that report. They were afraid of the giants. They were afraid of the violence that they were going to be facing. But Caleb stealed the people before Moses and said, Let's go up at once and possess it. 
for they are a stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they have searched to the children of Israel. Church, can I tell you, it's, it's so easy. It's so easy for us today to get to look, look at the battles that we have to face and the things that we're up against. It looks like because iniquity is abounding, there's so much iniquity in the world, it's easy to get our eyes off of God and to get our eyes on the things of the world and get us distracted, see? But we're on a church, we're on a journey. We're joining from this place to that place. We're doing from, we're journeying from this temporary home to our permanent home. And we church, we better trust in the Lord because that day is soon approaching, church. It's soon approaching. But that church, we've got a responsibility. I tell you, there's only one way that we're going to build in the that land, church. I tell you, we can't doubt God. We've got to believe God. The people murmured against God because they murmured against God. The hand of the Lord was given. And the Lord said, because they murmured against me, not one man of this evil generation will enter into the promised land. See, it's easy to murmur against God. It's, get, it's easy to get to looking at the battles that, we, that we're up against and the battles that we're facing and get our minds off of God, bro. It's easy to get to looking at them situations and to get our minds off of the Lord and for doubt to enter in and, uh, and unbelief. God, and I tell you today, that we better be a people today that stands up and says, I'm going to believe God because I know that God's still able to carry us through, church. We better be that church that stands up and believes God. That hurt God because the people didn't believe Him. After all God had done for Him, all the mighty miracles that God had done, when He brought Him out of bondage, see, they didn't look at that thing. They didn't look at all them things that God had done. They looked at that bottle that they was going to have to face. Churches don't look at the bottle. Let's keep our eyes on the one that's able to carry us through. You see, all power belongs into God, church. The enemy has no more power than we allow him to have over us. That's why, church, we need to be full of the Spirit. We need to get full of God in this last day. We need to get full of God, church. Let's don't be in that generation. Let's don't be in that generation that don't believe God. Murphy Church of God. Let's be in that generation that comes up and believes God. That believes God's Word. Let's take Him at His Word, church. God can't lie. Every word that's written in this book, in this Holy Word, is the truth, church. If God said, I'll never believe you, never believe you, never forsake you, God will never leave us and He'll never forsake us. But we've got to believe on Him. Oh, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus and the blood that He shed on the Calvary. Thank God that we're not under that law, church, but we're under grace today. Ain't you glad that we're under grace today? And we're able to go to the throne room. Oh, thank you, thank you. God wants to stand on the right hand of the Father today and make an intercession for you and I. I'm so thankful for that today, church. We've got a lot to be thankful for, praise God. Oh, praise God. The battle was won on Calvary, see? He won it on Calvary when he shed his blood for you and me, church. So see, because of what he did, we can do also. Because of what he did, we can do something for God. See? Church. Not one of those evil men of that evil men of that generation was allowed to enter in. Not one of them. But Joshua and Caleb. See, Caleb had a different spirit about him. And I believe us in here tonight, I believe we got that different spirit about us too, church. I believe we've got the Spirit of Christ in us tonight, church. I believe we've got the Spirit of Christ in us. I believe we've got the Spirit of faith too, don't you, church? God is able. That generation didn't make it. 
They wandered around and around in this church for 40 years until every one of those evil men had perished and died. This don't be numbered for that generation that don't believe God. This be the number for the generation that doesn't believe God. You see, they thought their children, that generation, they thought their wives and their children was going to become a prey in the land. But they are the very ones that inherited the promised land. And the very ones that crossed over in the promised land because they believed God. And church, I believe tonight, if we'll believe God, I believe we'll see great things happen in this world, church. Let me tell you, this thing ain't over yet, church. As long as there's a breath in our body, church, and there's a, there's still a fight in us, there's still a fight in God's people. I believe God's people just need to stand up and pull their shoulders back and act like a mighty army of God, act like a soldier of God. See, it's so easy to want to sit back and wait on the devil to bring things to us. Wait on them trials and wait on them troubles to come our way. But sometimes, church, I think we need to take the fight to him. See? Lord told us to go up and possess it. Go forward. Move forward. I believe that's what he's saying to the church today in these last days. Church, move forward. We're about to inherit the promised land, church. Let's go forward, church. You see, I believe Murphy Church of God can make a difference over here in this county. Not only in this county. Let's don't, let's just don't put a limit on God. Let's don't limit him to try to confine him to the one area. See, God's a big God. How about Western North Carolina? Is there enough faith in here to change Western North Carolina? To make a difference in Western North Carolina? You see, church, all it takes is faith. But we've got to believe, church. Church, do you believe? I believe. You see, we've got to be strong in the Lord. To take the fight to the enemy, we've got to be strong in Him. See, it takes a warrior to go forward. See, if you stand still and you just stand in defensive mode, you're just standing there in defensive mode. Which we do have that rock of defense with Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying, sir? But to move forward, to move forward, we need the Spirit of God. We need to be filled with the Spirit of God, church. We can take the battle of hand. We can take the battle of hand. Don't have to wait on him. To bring it to us. We can take the hand. Ooh. Ephesians 6 and 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You see, it ain't nothing we can do. But if we stand in His life and trust in His name and His power, and see, we can make a difference, church. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Listen, once again, they're not carnal. Our weapons of warfare are not carnal. Listen, verse number 12 of Ephesians 6. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. See, church? For us to stand in this last day, we don't have to put on the whole armor of God. See, we, we're facing battles today, but you don't know what that battle tomorrow's going to bring. But by faith, we know that we're going to make it through. Listen, listen. Stand there for it, having your lawns girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of Jesus. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able, and don't say whether you may be able, 
where ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with the whole prayer of supplication in the Spirit and watching down to with all perseverance and supplication for all can saints. The corner. Church, can we put on the whole armor of God tonight? Now listen, God can't make us on the roof. God ain't going to make us on the roof. You see, church, it's up to us to put on that armor. See, we've got to gird our have our Lord, we've got to gird our Lord's about with truth and righteousness. Church, it's up to us. We've got to do this thing. But he's our help. You see, he's our help. If you're willing to put the gird up and have our Lord's gird about with him, put on all of Jesus Christ, is what I'm saying. If we're willing to do that, walk in truth and righteousness, he'll help us. He'll help us. I said somebody the other day. I get up in the morning, it's a long time I've never ever seen a morning. Most of the time I put my shoes on. I'll be alone when I put on my work shoes and get ready to go about my day. But I, as I tie my shoes, I'm like, Lord, help me, God, have my feet shine with the preparation of the gospel of peace. See, that we can make a difference, church. I don't know about you, but I want to have my feet shot in the preparation of the gospel of peace. See, we need to be prepared when we get up in the morning. Get our minds on God, be prepared, look for something to take place that day where we might be able to uplift His name or uplift the kingdom of heaven. Or bring the word to somebody that's lost and don't know Jesus Christ. They say in the Roman these days in the Bible days. The Roman soldiers, they say that the army, listen, so it, so it, in tune with each other. They wore special sandals that would help them advance against the enemy. They listen, help them advance. That's what we need to do. The church today needs to advance. But they put on their sandals. They say that that army be so in secret with each other, so in tune with each other, that the sound of their heels, when they march toward the enemy, made such a noise that it automatically, immediately put such a fear into the enemy. Can I tell you today, God couldn't be put up here in the devil today? Can I tell you the devil today trembling at the sound of Jesus' name, church? Amen. See, the devil's trembling at his name. Because he also knows that Jesus won a victory when he died on the cross of Calvary. Oh, thank God we're not under the law. <laughs> we're under grace, praise God. I'm so thankful. Church, are you willing today to put on the whole armor of God? I want to share this with you. I shared this with somebody the other day. Lord, give me a dream. Give me a dream a few months ago. I dreamed I was witnessing to some folks. About a dozen people in a circle. They were all left down in a circle. And I was ministering the word of God unto them. Now this is this. This is not, this ain't just a rocky, this is for the church. So you take this and apply this to your life because it's to each, for each and every one of us. But I was missing the word of those group of people there and they was glad to accept the word. Glad to accept it. I could feel Oh, that word was making a difference. But then all of a sudden there was a ladder up here before me, church. A real tight, I'm scared to death of heights. I'm scared to death. Give me on 10 foot and my knees will be shaking. But that ladder went way over up. And it was real flimsy. I began to climb that ladder. Knew I had to go up. As I was trying to climb that ladder, that thing was a shaking. It was a shaking, real flimsy. I was scared to death. But I kept on climbing when I got to the top of that thing. When I got to the top of that ladder, there was a walk board. A little old air flimsy walk board. And I'm like, hey, man, I gotta go across that thing too. I don't climb up this ladder. But listen, this is for the church. We've got to climb a little higher, church. But I began to walk across that walk board. But I made it, see, because it wasn't nothing that I could do. It was the hand of the Lord helping me. Helping me take that walk, praise God. It's Him. It ain't nothing that we can do, but it's Jesus Christ, praise God. I walked across that walk. I made it. Church, I made it. But I, all of a sudden, there was another group of people, about a dozen folks, appeared to me. 
I was ministering the word of God unto them, but they was rejecting the word. See, we're going to face rejection, church. We're going to face rejection. That's why we need to put on the whole armor of God. We need to step up the game a little bit. We need to step it up a little bit. We need to increase our faith, church. But they was rejecting that word. And I could feel, I could feel that rejection. There was a little fear come on me, church, because of the rejection. And I began, I began to walk away. I heard somebody holler my name. They said, Rocky Williamson. He called me by my first and my last name. Can I tell you, if you're a child of God today, you're a true born again child of God, the devil knows your name. Can I tell you, if you're trying to make a difference in the body of Christ, can I tell you that he knows your name? But the closer we get to the closer we get to the Lord, the worse the battle we're going to have to fight, church. But that man hollered by name was a rocking wind, and I looked to the right, and it was the devil. He had a bow and an iron in his hand. About the difference from here to that mirror back there, church. And I knew he had a dead shot on me. He said, I'm going to kill you. And he brought that arrow back. And I was, I was looking dead at him. He turned that thing loose. And I knew he had a dead shot on me. Right here. And right when that arrow, before that arrow got to me, I raised my hand like that. And that thing stopped before it touched my hand and fell to the ground. I reached out there and picked that thing up. That arrow. And it had an emerald shield. Greenish blue shield around that thing protecting me. You see, that's what the shield of faith can do, church. Let me tell you, no matter how the devil tries to come against God's people, if we've got faith and we'll believe, praise God, we are victorious, praise God. I believe we need to step up our faith a little bit, church. Now I know, I know there's some here, you're, you're strong in the Lord. I know that. But see, we can all get a little bit closer to Him. So He said, draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. See, the closer we get to God, the harder battle we're going to have to fight, church. But we're on the winning side. See, we cannot be defeated, church. Because we are on the winning side. And I'm talking about we're on the side of the one who died on Calvary for us. And he's on the right hand of the Father making intercession. See, we come up against something, church, and we feel like we can't make it through it. And we go to cry out to God. He hears us, church. See, he hears the cries of his people. He's standing on the right hand of the Father. And they're communicating with each other. They're talking with each other. And they're sending us help, church. Church, I feel God. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house tonight. I don't know what you feel, but I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I, feel, I believe the Holy Ghost is going to shake us up, church, a little bit. Draw us a little bit closer to Him, brother. Can I share with you? Because the Lord brought this to my attention a couple of days, a couple of nights ago. In the book of Hebrews, let me tell you what faith will do, church. We know the just are going to live by faith. That's us, that's us, church. We've got to live by faith. Not only live by faith, we walk by faith. We know that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence is not things not seen. You know, church, I've never been to the promised land, but I know it's there. I've not seen Jesus' face, but I know he's alive today. And I know he's standing on the right hand of the Father. Listen, let me give you, let me give you some examples of what growing in faith can do for, do for us, church. Listen, talk about Israel. Hebrews 11 and 29 says, By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians the same we do were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. See what faith can do, church? By faith, the heart of Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And what, what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak, 
of Samson, of Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and of the prophets. Listen, listen to this. Listen to what faith will do. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong. Listen, wax valiant in fight. See, that's where the Lord's trying to get us, church. He's trying to get us to that point, praise God, where we'll be valiant in fight. You see, he's trying to get us to that place, church, because he also knows the times and the days that we're living in. Listen, and turn to flight the armies of the aliens. I see, I could go on and on with these examples. That's just a few of them, church. But let me tell you, the church is able today to still tear down the strongholds. See, see, Israel, they looked, they looked ahead. The spies broke back that report and said they ain't dwelling in strongholds. The, the, the cities are fenced and they got high walls around and bars and gates. But can I tell you today that God's people is able to overcome that thing? Yeah, but, but the Lord fighting for us, church, we're able to tear down them walls. Do you believe that today, church? I don't know about you, but I still want to believe God, church. I want to take him at his word. I want to take him at his word. See? See, the devil tried to get a stronghold on God's people. See, a lot of times we go through things for a long time. See, a stronghold it ain't something that just takes place instantly. The devil can't get a stronghold on God's people instantly. It takes time to build a stronghold. It took time to build these fence cities. It took time to put up them high walls and to put bars and beat those big gates upon the old gates of the city. It took time, church. But I, tell, I still believe God, though, that God's people is a strong people. But I believe still today that we're able to become a stronger people in Christ Jesus. I believe that we're able to take the fight to the enemy, brother. <clears throat> Tear down these walls and these gates. You believe it, church? I do. I believe it. When that generation came up and believed God, they entered into the promised land. See, that they knew they knew they knew there was going to be battles. They knew there was going to be battles, wars they were going to have to fight. But see, by faith, they walked up, they walked by faith. They believed God. That's what we've got to do today, church. We've got to believe God. I want to share one Bible with you. The generation who did go into the promised land, into the promised land, listen. Now, they had done defeated Sihon, king of Heshbon, but I want to share this Bible with you. It's with uh, all of the king of Bashan. He came out against Israel. He and all his people to battle at Israel. And the Lord said unto me, Fear him not, for I will deliver him and all his people and his land into thy hand. And thou shalt do unto him as thou didst unto Sihon, king of the Amorites. It's wrote in Hesed. Listen. So the Lord, our God, delivered into our hands all also, the king of Bashan, and all his people. And we smote him until none was left to him remaining. We took all his cities at that time. There was not a city which we took not from them, Three score cities and all the region of Argyle, the kingdom of all in Bashan. And all these cities were fenced with high walls and gates and bars, beside other walls, towns, a great many. Sixty fence cities, church. Sixty fence cities that Israel took. Sixty of them had high walls and gates built around them. Just that few of people, praise God. Can I tell you, with this few of people and now we're still able, praise God, to take back some of what the devil's taken? And I tell you, God's people, if we'll walk, praise God, in the full honor of God, we're able to take back what's been taken. See, see, there's been some generations that come along here that's failed out. Now let's just be honest, church. That's why the church is in the shape it's in. But see, God wants to do something. God's not finished with this church. We've not left here. Let's be that generation today that stands and believes God. Let's be that generation that puts on the whole armor of God. 
See, God good to us. He's given us a promise, brother. And if we'll be faithful, we'll be true. To him, we're going to enter into that land. I don't know about you, church. But I want to be, I want to be numbered with a generation that believes God tonight. I want to be numbered with a generation. Look, look, if the Lord tarries and we all go by the way of the grave, that next generation is going to remember us. You see, they're going to remember us, church. We've got to leave them something to remember. That we're God's people. See, that we're God's people. And God is still able to bring His people through the fire, praise God. And during that, on this journey, we're able to tear down the strongholds. See, that the devil's got from the church. He don't have no place in God's people. In the church, he has no place in it. I believe we can take it back, church. What generation after generation? Well, there have been some mighty men, and mighty men and women of God that's gone on to be with the Lord. But the majority has failed God. See, he said, few there will be the family. See, few that is going to be that enter in, church. We better make sure we number that few that enters into the promised land. Because I assure you, I assure you today, as sure as I'm standing here, we today are standing on the brink of eternity, on the brink of promised land. I ain't no one of us here tonight, promise tomorrow. The very hairs of our heads are numbered, and our days are numbered. It's for every time a man to die. Whether we leave by the rafter, whether we leave by the way of the grave, hey, we better know that we're ready, church. There's only two things that's going to keep us out of heaven. One is sin. We better make sure there ain't no sin in our life, church. We better make sure that we're still a holy people before God. The Bible says that without holiness, no man shall see God. I still believe that word to be true. Without holiness, ain't nobody going to live with But all of us, all of us can still grow in the Lord. And we can still do something for God. This thing ain't over. This thing ain't over. If we'll just step it up a little bit, put on the whole armor of God, walk by faith and believe what God said. He said, He's our battle for us. The closer we get to Him, the harder the battle gets. The closer we get to God, the more fire we have to walk through. But we're still on the winning side. God's still on the throne, church. And we can still be victorious, praise God. No matter what the Bible looks like and what kind of fight we're in, we are still a victorious church. I love you today. Church, do you want to close the <coughs> Can we be the generation? Can us, us right here, right here, can we be the generation that believes God? I'm telling you, I still believe we can see a revival, church. I believe we can see revival sweep this land, but we're going to have to believe it. You see, revival ain't going to come. We pray for it, as long as we don't have faith to believe it's coming, it ain't going to come. See, God's not done it. And we've not entered into that promised land yet. See, He's entrusted us. And we need to work for the Lord. Let's do something for God. How many neighbors do we have that we can be a witness to? How many family members that we know ain't ready to meet God? Can we pick up a phone and call them and say, hey, the Lord is coming. And He's still coming. Church, let's get on fire for God. Let's get on fire for the Lord. Let's step out into 
the midst of the battlefield. Let's don't try to hang around and on the back line. Let's get on the front line of the battlefield. And let's take the fight to the enemy church. Oh, having on that whole armor of faith and believing God, praise God, that he's going to take care of us. Because he will, he'll see us through. I don't know about you tonight, but I'm going to be on the front line of the battlefield. Sometimes it gets hard. And we go through things, we go through battles, we, we fight, we go through trials, and it's hard, it's just hard sometimes. See, our flesh is weak, but the spirit in us is alive. And it overcomes to keep us going, church. We're overcomers. Thank God for the blood of the Lamb. Church. I hope I better my help to you tonight. I hope I said something tonight that's going to help us. I hope I said something tonight that's going to help us grow in the Lord. Wax value in fight. See, God's called us to be warriors. God's army's not weak. See, God's not the God of a weak army. His army is mighty, praise God. Can I tell you nothing? We're mighty in Him and through Him. I believe we can step out by faith and be that witness. Walk that walk that we should be walking. So that we be that light. See, your calling may not be the same as mine. God's calling us all into something different. What's God called you to do? What's God spoken to you? What's God made on your heart to do? Are you doing it, church? You see, when I'm saying that, I've still been preached to me a couple of times. See, I'm going to have to listen to it again. Convinced the word sharper than a two-handed, two-handed sword. See, it's alive. The word's alive. It cuts us. Cuts going in. Cuts coming out. <laughs> but God's designed it that way. That we may grow closer. And wax value in fact. I want to step out on the front lines of the battlefield, church. I want to be on the front lines. Let's take the fight to the enemy, church. Then we'll be victorious. Then we can stand in victory, church. We'll be the victorious church that we should be. Sister, will you come up and play something for us? Church, this is what God's laid on my heart tonight to deliver. See, it's not, it's not what I've chosen. I'd much rather preach on the Holy Ghost outpour of the Spirit. Preach on the Holy Ghost and that fire. I love it. But see, God's given me this message to deliver to the church. To today's church. We're in the last days. And we too are standing on the brink of the promised land. Let's wax value and fight. Let's be that mighty army that God's called us to be. You see, we can still make a difference. Each one of us here can make a difference. I don't know whether you know it tonight, but you can make a difference in this battle. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's made the people. If we keep ourselves covered by that blood and we stand in that blood, Stand in it. Stay in it. Stay covered by our blood. Don't step out of that place that you're in. But let's go forward in that blood. You see what I'm saying, church?
church. Let's wax valued in Him. I believe God's army. I believe the church today can be so valued, wax so valued in fire, that we can put a fear in the enemy, Brother Winston. We can put a fear in Him. You see, we don't fear Him. We fear God. We know that all power belongs unto Him. The church holds a wax value in Him. Do you want a wax value in the Lord tonight, church? And this is the message that the Lord gives me for tonight. The perfect church of God. Because I believe God wants each one of you to make a difference. You can make a difference. Church, where you stand tonight?